Hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Catherine and I'll be in the background answering any WebEx technical questions. If you experience difficulties during the WebEx session, please dial 1-866-779-3239 or you can message myself, the WebEx producer, using the Q&A panel. During today's event, all participants will remain in the listen-only mode. And as a reminder, today's call is being recorded. We will hold a Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. We do encourage you to submit written questions at any time using the Q&A panel located on the bottom right side of your screen. Please type your question into the text field and hit send, and please keep the drop down as all panelists. With that, I will pass it over to Alan House, your, your speaker for today. Alan, you have the floor. Thank you. Hi, this is Alan House. I'm a senior analyst here at Value Line. I'm joined today by three other senior analysts, Charlie Moran, Nate Eekman, and Sharif Abdu. Today, we're gonna to provide an update on the economy and stock market. We will then recommend one stock to buy right now. And finally, answer any questions you may have. Please note that this presentation will be available on our website. That's www.valueline.com and on our YouTube channel within the next 48 hours. All previous webinars are also posted. Before I jump into the heart of the presentation, for those joining us for the first time, I want to provide a brief overview of who we are here at Value Line. We are a New York headquartered corporation that has been providing investment research for more than 90 years. Our flagship product is the Value Line Investment Survey. This service is a unique source of financial information and is designed to help investors make informed investment decisions that fit their individual goals and levels of risk. The product includes data, information, and analysis on equities that trade on the New York Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ, and the Toronto Stock Exchange. It also includes economic commentary, easy to follow model portfolios, stock screens, industry-based analysis, and much more. The service, which is published weekly, is created by ValueLine's research department, which is comprised of more than 70 analysts, economists, data experts, and quantitative specialists. One thing I want to stress is that our research is completely unbiased and independent. Unlike many Wall Street brokerages, ValueLine has no investment banking business with any company, including all the equities under our coverage. ValueLine does not execute trades for its subscribers and therefore has no vested interest in whether our subscribers buy, sell, or hold a specific equity. What's more, our staff of professional securities analysts are not permitted to own shares of any company that they cover. If you have any questions about the products or services we offer, or our different tiers of subscriptions, that information can be found at, at, at valueline.com or by calling 1-800-VALUELINE. Now let's discuss the economy and the stock market. This content was prepared by ValueLine's economic staff. The Federal Reserve is monitoring another troublesome situation in addition to its now year-long battle to tame inflation. The central bank has deployed its most restrictive monetary course in four decades, raising the benchmark federal funds rate by more than four percentage points. That rapid change in rates was also an element in the liquidity crunch at a few regional banks. To oversimplify, some banks invested in longer-term notes that they could not readily turn into cash to meet large withdrawals from depositors. This prompted the federal government to step in and protect deposits at Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. Volatility in the credit market spiked on the news and many strong mid-sized banks saw their stocks gyrate based on a fear factor. The shutting of the aforementioned regional banks brought talk of a contagion. However, the approximately 15 largest banks, which are operating under stricter lending rules since the financial crisis of 2008-2009, have not shown signs of financial stress. The overall credit situation, though, bears watching as the Fed's increasingly restrictive monetary policies 
could increase stress in the financial systems that could potentially extend to corporate America and the consumer sector. Business investment has fallen while consumer credit card balances have risen to record levels. This likely will weigh on economic growth in the coming months. Inflation eased some last month but remains elevated. Indeed, the February Consumer Price Index, known as the CPI, rose 0.4% and 6.0% on a month-to-month and one-year basis, respectively, with a decline in food prices offsetting higher energy costs. The core CPI, which excludes the volatile food and energy components, climbed 5.5% over the last 12 months. The U.S. Labor Department remains a bright spot. In fact, non-farm payrolls expanded by 311,000 positions in February on the heels of an even stronger January, exceeding expectations and still signaling a solid labor market. The unemployment rate ticked up to 3.6%, but some of that can be attributed to more workers returning to the labor Decreased labor participation rate will help the Fed in its battle to tackle inflation because more workers competing for available jobs would likely put downward pressure on salaries. In conclusion, volatility in the stock and bond market spiked on the regional bank news. This reinforces our stance that investors should focus their attention on top quality companies while maintaining a significant amount of cash in their portfolios. On that note, ValueLine is providing a great deal of information on and analysis to help our subscribers. We know that most of our users depend on our weekly stock reports, time-tested ranking systems, and other valuable service. And in addition, ValueLine provides a great deal of daily content that can, be, that can help you avoid the pitfalls and profit during this volatile time in the stock market. Every business day, senior members of ValueLine's research Department review the most actively traded stocks, company press releases, news stories, trade periodicals, and other sources for data information that may change our view and investment recommendations for specific stocks. When something noteworthy crosses our desk, we immediately publish a supplementary report that outlines the new information and, importantly, what it means for the stock and shareholders. This content is posted throughout the day on our website. Again, that's www.valueline.com. We will now show you how to access it. Access it. Once signed in, head to the dashboard where Sharif is already located. This is the main landing page for subscribers. Under the quick links, click on supplementary reports, which Sharif is now doing. As you can see, the research department has been busy publishing our updated thoughts on the stocks that we track. We strongly suggest that subscribers visit this page often. Some individual companies incurred a lot of debt or sold stocks and improved liquidity over the last few years, especially those dealing with sharply reduced demand for their offerings and supply chain problems, among other issues. Due to the changing structure of the company balance sheet, Value Line has been reviewing and altering our proprietary financial strength grades for the stocks in our coverage universe. This change, these changes are posted each week in our selection and opinion newsletter. For those of you that don't know, financial strength, along with price stability, another proprietary Value Line measure, are the two metrics that are used to calculate a stock safety, a key measure of risk. When considering a new stock to invest in, we strongly suggest that you utilize financial strength and safety in your decision-making process. For more information in regard to our proprietary ranks and ratings, ValueLine provides a user guide that can be accessed via the investment education section of our website. Lastly, this is a good time to mention that the case for individual, individual stocks is quite strong over broad index funds. Now let's move on to the one stock to buy right now. For this, let's go to the screener. Vineline subscribers have access to 15 preset screens and 50 fields. I should also, also mention that another 100 or so fields are available 
but it requires a higher level of subscription. If this interests you, please call 1-800-VALUE-LINE. The current economic environment remains uncertain, marked by inflation worries, geopolitical concerns, and the possibility of a recession. So today we want to emphasize a good balance between financial stability and upside potential in the short and intermediate term. We'll start the screening process by looking at the safety and financial strength ranks in the ranks, ranks and ratings section. There are many risk measures to consider, but today we're going to start by applying our time test of safety ranks. Safety measures the total risk of a stock and is arranged on an easy to understand scale from one to five, with one being, being the most conservative issue. I want to highlight the fact that stocks ranked favorably for safety have in the past held up far better than the broader market during corrections and downturns. They also meaningfully participate in up markets. For more information, I encourage you to peruse our ranking system guide, which is available free of charge from within the investment education section of our website. For this screen, we're going to focus on stocks with a safety rank of one. By, by applying the first criteria, we trimmed our potential candidates down from 5,700 to 121 candidates. So that's quite a, you know, we cut a lot of companies just by doing that. Now let's go with an additional level of security by applying financial strength. Although it's already a factor in the calculation of safety, I'm going to include financial strength. These grades range from C to A double plus in nine increments. Given the current market environment, we're going to go with companies that garner a financial strength rating of A double plus. Similar to the state ranks we just used, we want a, a balance of a strong balance sheet and financial stability and upside potential. By applying this criteria, we've cut the list from 121 down to 50. Okay, so we've looked at some risk measures. Now let's apply some performance metrics. We're going to stay in the ranks and ratings section and look at the timeliness rank. Timeless is a proprietary value line measure that evaluates the stock's projected performance in the coming 6 to 12 months. It's a straightforward scale from 1 to 5, with 1 being the highest. Today, we want to focus on stocks that will, at a minimum, move in tandem with the overall market, but still, still give us upside beyond that. So we're going to look for stocks ranked 1, 2, or 3 for timeliness. By applying this screen, we have now whittled the list down to 42 names. So we started with 5,700, now we're down to 42. The next criterion is also in the ranks and ratings section. Again, given the current state of the equity markets in a rather uncertain economy, we want to focus on companies with a consistent earnings stream. We we'll emphasize companies with earnings predictability rating of 100, which is the highest. So after conducting this screen, we have whittled the list down even further to 11 names, as you, as you can see. Okay, we also want to focus on companies that can provide support in the event the markets and the economy fall further than forecasted. Companies that pay a generous dividend yield are certainly in favor during these difficult times. With that in mind, we're going to focus on companies that have a dividend yield of at least the value line median, which is currently roughly 2.3%. After running this screen, we have cut our list to our final six candidates. You can make a strong argument for any of the remaining candidates, and investors interested in adding new positions should consider them. However, only one can be today's one stock to buy right now. And after consulting with a number of our senior analysts, we prefer and recommend PepsiCo. Before we, we click on Pepsi, please note that screens can be saved and revisited by utilizing the created, Create Save Screen button at the top, as Sharif is doing now. That way you can access it in the future. Let's take a look at the last full page report 
which was published in January. As you can see in the statistical array or the center of the report that includes financial data, PepsiCo's earnings have generally trended upward over the last several years, and we look for that pattern to continue. While a likely weaker economic backdrop might well have some impact on earnings, it will likely be less than most companies will endure. Pepsi can be seen as a safe haven during these uncertain economic times. The company's operating resilience will likely endure through these challenging times. PepsiCo has proven its ability to pivot through headwinds. Notably, the high rate of inflation has derailed some growth, but the company has managed to limit the impact of rising costs through increased pricing. Also, reconfigurations of the portfolio, including smaller packaging options, have helped retain and even gain consumers. And, while, and although operating expenses can continue to hamper profitability, a disciplined approach to operations should help to soften the effect from higher costs. Taking a look at some quantitative metrics, the stock has solid marks across the board, including a safety rank of one, a financial strength rank score of A double plus, a beta coefficient of 0.75. The issue was is ranked three, which is average for year head price performance while offering a dividend yield that is roughly on par with the value line median. Adding it all up, we think Pepsi is poised for strong results in 2023 and beyond, and the stock can form one of the building blocks of a successful portfolio. It is today's one stock to buy right now. We'll now tackle your questions. Please note that we typically can't answer complex questions about specific stocks on the spot. For this, we recommend a review of our latest reports. The first few questions were submitted prior to this presentation. Now I'll hand it back to Charlie, Nate, and Sharif. Thank you. Hello, my name is Charlie Moran. I'm a senior analyst at Value Line. I'm with Sharif Abdu, and we will be answering your questions. I have one from Sally immediately. Uh, she asks about the market cap and why it's not considered a mega cap given it's in the $249, $250 billion market cap, which you can see on the left-hand side if you scroll down. Uh, we have three uh, definitions of market cap at value line from, uh, well, beneath $2 billion is considered a small cap from 2 billion to 10 billion is a mid cap and anything above 10 billion is considered a large cap we do not have a classification for mega cap uh, the next question comes from alex and he asks about the total capital ratio which is asked uh, a little bit above in the capital structure box if you look there in the meeting of the capital structure or the excuse me the total capital you see 65 percent and what that can do is give you a gauge of how levered the balance sheet is and you can use that to look at the historical ratio if you go down to the array you can see the debt and the equity in past years and you can get a sense as to whether or not the balance sheet is getting healthier or unhealthy or they are using their capital in efficient ways. Um, let's see, the other question was about, was from Tony asking about the, uh, the PE ratio and why it's italicized in 2022. And what you can see if you scroll up again to the PE ratio where it says average annual PE ratio, you notice that that is different from the historical numbers prior to 2022. And all this means is that this is an estimation like the estimates above, uh, like sales per share, earnings per share, et cetera. And until we have, at that point in time, uh, uh, a set number for the market, or excuse me, for the PE ratio for the market as a whole, this is going to be an estimate uh, of what the PE ratio is relative to the market 
and it's also going to be an estimate given that their earnings for the full year, which we estimated at 680 above, uh, has not been printed. It's not uh, actual yet. So until we have an actual figure for the year, we're not going to have a firm uh, number for the PE ratio. Uh, let's see what else I have here in terms of questions. Or uh, Sharif, do you see anything? Nothing is jumping out at the uh, jumping out at me at the moment, Charlie. Yeah, again, we haven't had many questions coming through during the course of the uh, presentation. Uh, now, I, I, since uh, the questions are a little bit hit or miss so far, I'm going to touch on something that uh, is a frequently asked questions uh, during these webinars. Uh, People often ask about our definitions for things like timeliness ranks, uh, technical ranks, safety, financial strength, et cetera. Um, so I'm gonna point out to people, the best place to find the, the definitions for some of the, the terms that we use, uh, both in the reports and in, during the webinars, is under the in, uh, investment education section, which I'm kind of circling right now. So you would click on investment education, uh, and that takes you to, you know, we have different, uh, different tools that you can use here. Uh, one of the best places is under the glossary so that you can click on there. And it's sort of an A to Z uh, glossary of all the terms that we use. So for example, we can go to click on T and you'll see uh, the technical rank. You can see the time minutes rank and it'll give you sort of a, a quick uh, rundown of uh, a quick definition of what those different uh, terms mean. Um, so, uh, rather than just reading to you uh, what, what the definitions are, I'll tell you that the best place to find the definitions for the different terms that we use is um, is within the within the uh, investment education section and the glossary. Um, Charlie, uh, anything else that you're seeing right now? No, just one last question uh, that came from Dean, and he asked about what the uh, the gray vertical lines represented in the uh, in the presentation. And you can see the uh, the the gray vertical bar in the first quarter of 2020, which is when uh, the recession occurred, and that's what the gray bars represent. And uh, I guess we will know if and when we have a recession. Uh, from the MBER, but until that point in time, um, we cannot have that bar presented in the graph. But uh, apart from that, that's all the questions that we've had. I thank you, and uh, let's send it back to um, Catherine. Thank you, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. This does conclude today's presentation. You may now disconnect your lines and have a great rest of your day.